Whoa! Where'd you get that awesome donut? Wait a minute, you can use your grit coin in the community? What? <laughs> songs, the pinnacle of music. Some songs are really bad, while others are pretty good. But today, we're not going to be talking about songs. We're going to be talking about masterpieces. These godly creations ascend the boundaries of what should be humanly possible, and they reach a point far beyond the perception of man. That is, of course, except for me, for I am far beyond the mortal meat sacks that scavenge the plains of this world. I am someone with the unnatural ability to perceive and evaluate every single inch of these masterpieces. So today, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now remember, this is my opinion. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong and you should shut up, peasant! So, without further ado, here are the top 10 most best songs of all the world ever. The FIFA song. This absolute national treasure is made by a national treasure in himself, Misha. That's right, the creator of the infamous, or should I say, famous Pokemon Go song. Because, let's be real, who'd be dumb enough to dislike that song? Now, this song is similar in lyrical style to his Donald Trump for President song, but this clearly blows it out of the water for miles to come. You see, whereas that song's visuals were meaningless and uninspired, this song's visuals are... not those things. Throughout the song, you can see the song's sheer intensity and epicness rubbing off of his playing ability. As you can see, he misses every single shot he takes. Is what a Richard would say, but if you open your minds beyond your present cognitive abilities, you would be able to see the sheer genius behind these visuals. It's a metaphorical representation of his troubles. In the lyrics, he says, a beautiful picture of someone fighting against society, no matter how people judge him, no matter how they'll reject him, he will not let anyone or anything take his passion away from him. He'd much rather live a life that he wants to live than a life where he forces himself to fit in with everyone else. You see, that's what the visuals of him missing are all about. You see, the goal represents society, Misha represents himself, obviously, and the ball represents his place in the world. It's visual interpretation of his struggle with society. He tries to kick the ball into the goal, which is not only a metaphor for trying to fit in with the norm, but it's also what you, a mindless social slave, would deem acceptable in a game of soccer and worth rewarding. However, Misha doesn't care about any of that. When he kicks the ball at such an easy distance away from the goal, it still doesn't go in, symbolizing that he doesn't want to fit in with society. Instead, he rather thinks that standing out from society is worth rewarding, which the music complements beautifully. Looks like the only one who missed was you, who missed the point entirely. Now, this song isn't just beautiful, heartwarming, thought-provoking visuals. It also comes with lyrics. Now you see, I've already touched on the two lines that differ from the rest already, but we still haven't talked about the rest of the song. Well, he repeats the word FIFA throughout the entire song. Like, that's the entire rest of the song, there are no other lyrics. 
Ugh, that's lazy, stupid, meaningless writing, I hear you complaining. Well, you're lazy, stupid, meaningless writing, if that's what you think. I mean, clearly, you weren't thinking, because if you were, you would realize the true, beautiful meaning of this song. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, it's not Christmas yet, so will you all stop celebrating? Happy Thanksgiving. Where was I? Oh yeah, it's about so much more. It's about acceptance. See, Misha is teaching kids, as evidenced by the four kids in the title, to stand up for what they believe in, no matter how society judges them for it. The ball missing the goal, as previously established, represents defying the norms of society and standing up for what you believe in. Well, soccer slash football, depending on where you live, is all about the ball and the goal. Therefore, FIFA refers to the action of standing up for your beliefs, which Misha repeats throughout this entire beautiful song, encouraging kids to stand up for what they believe in. But hey, that's just a theory. Again! Also, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sick World Cup song. And since it's a soccer, soccer theme song, that means it's Sebastian's favorite. Well, we all know about Pink Fong's crazy it's single, Baby Shark. This song has blown up beyond monstrous proportions. And before we get on with this little entry, I just want to say, I've been making baby shark jokes since late 2016, so if you've ever made one, you owe me royalties, and you're also so in your face. <laughs> now, I was at a school fundraiser. There was a little dance-off thing at the school. They played baby shark. Mm -hmm. You know, all the little kids, baby shark, do 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 do. -do. They're do doing their hearts away. Then they all leave after Grandpa Shark. And this is because they're fake fans. They don't know anything past the iconism of it all. And if you're a fake fan like them, I hope you burn in ping pong hell. Speaking of fake ping pong fans, you're all fake ping pong fans. Why? Because you don't know about night animals. <laughs> Shut up. And if you did, you shall be spared. You see, it's eerie Halloweenish style in January, and its uniqueness is what sets it apart from the overrated, yet still important part of music history, Baby Shark. While visually and lyrically, it's not as deep as the FIFA song. It's not trying to be. It's trying to be a simplistic edutainment song. Throughout the video, we're shown three different types of night animals. The owl, the raccoon, and the wolf. It showcases that they're all scary in their own, right? And they all have their own distinct personalities. But, um, they're all different. They have different personalities and different behaviors. Just like in real life. First, we learn about the owl. Right off the bat, we learn that they can contort their neck in many different directions. But, but you see, isn't that creepy, you know? Like, you can contort your neck and stuff. It's creepy, you know? I can't do, I mean, I can. You can't do that. It's pretty creepy, let's be real. It, like, it's the closest thing we're ever going to get to rated, like, M for Mature Horror Stuff. And from Pink Fong, and it's a really risky move they're doing that and showing it to their little kid audience, you know, because it's a really mature move, and I respect them for that. I mean, the owl is so chilling and scary that you just just look at that worm. That worm is scared, and if that worm is scared, you should be too. Cause if you're not scared, you're an idiot. Okay, I'm I'm scared, and it's not even real. Like, look at me, I'm I'm, I'm shaking. It's so. Scary. Next, we're introduced to the playful, mischievous raccoon, which
which is a nice transition from the creepiness of the owl to the raccoon, because it gives us time to warm up and process what's happening without shaking in our boots and peeing our pants, right? I am a raccoon with a mask. It's not really a mask. What? Uh, guys, guys, I never would have guessed that. This is a plot twist of the century. Like, I never would have guessed that. It's not really a mask, but you know, Ping Fong, they're educating us. See, this is what I mean about brilliant entertainment. It's entertaining, it's shocking, you don't understand it, but at the same time, you do. And you're educated, and you become smarter. For... And um, the entertainment aspect of it is only further highlighted when it acts like a horror movie. You see, you don't expect anything, it's playful. It's playful, having a good time, right? But then, it hits you with the jump scare of the century, man. Finally, after, you know, the playfulness of the raccoon, we've had our time to warm up, we move on to the wolf, a cousin to the dogs. Now, that might sound cute, but no, it's pretty scary. Now, you see his voice, you hear his sheer size and might, and it's like, wow, this is very scary. I would not like to meet one of those. And then he drops a bombshell on you. He's got a pack. A whole pack of brutal killing machines, just like him. And if that's not scary, you're a liar. Alright? Big fat liar. And then at the end of the song, the wolf gets all of his friends, and they all go running to murder the crap out of a deer that has done nothing to them. Like... He's dead. The deer is dead. Like, I don't care what childish fantasies you have. That deer is dead. It's heavily implied they died, and it's true, they died. Ping Fong themselves clearly confirmed that they died. So, uh, yeah. From a children's song. This is like a horror movie. There are jump scares, there are creepy creeps, there are chilling characters, there's freaking murder. It's, what more could you ask for? from an edutainment song, especially from Pink Fong. So, um, if your kid tells you, oh, for my birthday, I want to play Baby Shark, adopt them. Or rather, put them up for adoption, because you do not want that filth. Or, I have a better idea. You can fix them, tell them about night animals, and then surely they'll have a higher IQ for it, and you'll be a better parent. So, um... Thank you. Imagine this. It's September of 2018. After a long, enjoyable summer break, it's time to go back to middle school. There, you see posters advertising this brand new concept called Grit. Dear Doubtless Confusion. Then, a few days later, they host an assembly where they tell you what grit is all about. Grit, gratitude, responsibility, integrity, tenacity, is what they so tell you. They introduce the concept of grit coin and all the cool stuff you can buy with it just by being a good person. They introduce the concept of grit bands and it's like, like a whole nother world has been opened up. But when you think it couldn't get any better, they do something that you never in a million years would have thought was possible, especially by then. They play a video that just blows your mind. You see, at the start of the video, and you hear a familiar tune playing. That's right, the Justin Timberlake troll song that's been milked to death by everyone and their mothers, and you just want it to go away. And you're like, why are they playing this song? You know, why? Then, they start to sing, and you think to yourself, That's not Justin Timber, man. What is this? And then you realize, Oh my god. They just made a grit parody of a famous song. It's like a whole new genre of parody, like Minecraft parodies, too. Like, and it just blows your mind how a school staff 
was able to create such a masterpiece. And you know, you just sit there, watching the video, and you're mesmerized, unlike your low intelligence peers that are cringing, but what do they know? Their taste in music is about as good as Wally's taste in pizza. Guys, if this video hits five likes, I will make a Papa's Pizza Real Let's Play. So you better subscribe, hit that notification bell, like the video, and comment saying how that you loved it, and you better share with your friends. And I'm not holding anything back. I will make that video. So you better start liking right now. It's like, you know, God himself has rained down upon us weaklings to show us what we've been doing wrong. To show us the true meaning of life. And it's wonderful. Too bad we won't be able to talk about it. Yeah, it's either unlisted and I don't have the link private or deleted. I also don't have a photographic memory, so I don't remember much except its quality. I can't really remember all the little details to give an in-depth analysis on why it's so good. So, we can't exactly give this the spot, you know? So, that means we have to look at the daughter of Grit Parodies. Show Grit at School by Music Man. Show Grit at School. This is a Grit parody of a Minecraft parody of some awful Katy Perry song that I have no intentions on ever listening to in my life called Don't Mine at Night. And although that one's is good. This one is really good. So we've tackled entertainment songs, edutainment songs, but now we're tackling the entire pie chart. Now we're talking about persuasive songs. And they do a really good job of telling you why you should show grit, all the cool things you can do with grit, and just to be a better person in general. And it works, you know? A recent study has shown, upon listening to this song, 0% of people are bad people. So I think it's done its job, and it manages to be a really, really good song, too. So, that means it's a worthy spot on our list. Why'd I do that? Why am I mentally disabled like that? I guess you could say that this video is... Gritty cruel. <laughs> Kill me. Rumpel this is a good song. Rumpel, you see, rumpel, the genius rumpel, is that Rumpel still skin repeats his name. Rolls And it over and rumpel, over skin, again. Rumpel, skin, but that's rumpel, all it needs, you know? Rumpel, skin, the less substance rumpel, skin, there is, the less rumpel, skin, chance rumpel, of it being rumpel, bad. Rumpel, I mean, skin. when have you ever heard a song that just repeated the same phrase over and over? And it, and it was still bad. Yeah, that's right. You can't think of any single song that it's ever. I'm a savage. 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 <laughs> Ooh, Twenty-four Carat Magic is possibly one of the best songs of this generation, made by possibly one of the best artists of this generation. That's right, Kids Bop. That's right, the band known for making great covers of otherwise pretty mediocre songs have stepped up and they have made their own original song from, from scratch while still keeping it nice and PG for the kids to enjoy and also teaching them valuable life lessons about life. First, they stress the importance of equality in today's modern society, especially gender equality. You see, they say the lyric, I'm a dangerous woman with some money in my pocket. But um, instead of using any of the three girls that make up half the cast of the entire band in this video, they in, they instead make the boys sing this line. I'm a dangerous woman with some money in my pocket. So what if if you're a boy or a girl, what, just because he's a boy doesn't mean that he can't be a woman? Like, get real. Start living with the time. And also, mad respect to, um, to Cooper, to Freddy, and to Isaiah for, um, showing us how you really feel because that takes a lot of courage and you get nothing but my respect for that. So, um, 
yeah, we should all support them through these times. And, um, another thing that you might have missed is, um, the entire setting is Legoland. <laughs> like, the entire video, they're just dancing around Legoland, having fun. And they're trying to, they're trying to tell you that's the meaning of life. It's not about winning or losing. Oh, I'm winning at life. Oh, life sucks and I suck at it. It's about having fun, people. The gods themselves, kids bop, they have said it's about fun. And, um, fun fact, if you, um, rearrange the letters of kids bop, it's an anagram for God. So, who are you to say that God himself is wrong, huh? It's even in the name! What do you think 24K magic stands for? Yeah, that's right. 24 kids bop my life is awesome and cool. <laughs> See, this is why people love me. It's cause I- it's cause I go deeper. <laughs> so, um, yeah, kids bop, cause I know you're totally watching this, right? It's just be inspired to keep on teaching kids how to live life correctly and um, keep on making some more sick, awesome, original music videos. God bless. Wait, wait, what? B -b Bruno, B Bruno, what's a Bruno Mars? Isn't that like a planet? Okay, guys, I, I see the error in my ways. It's a, it's a bit too spoopy for my liking. I forgot. Um, there comes a time in every child's life when they start to experience some changes. Their face becomes Satan's tomato farm, their voice gets all wobbly, hair starts to grow in weird, unorthodox places, and um, their hormone levels. <sighs> Why? But... But how is this how is this relevant information? You you probably don't ask, considering that most of my subscribers like know me personally and I'm pretty sure they can they can see where I'm going with this, but essentially this is the puberty theme song. That's right, we're talking about Just Around the Corner by <laughs> Puberty E Why? Why do I write this? Puber- Why am I so immature? I'm- Shut up! No, I'm not. Puberty erection. That's right. That's- That's his name. This represents when a child's music taste goes from awful trash like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Saint Paul, whatever, to, um, good music like this. And it also just- Firmly represents this nice, family-friendly process in a nutshell, and it's beautiful. And, you know, it really teaches kids that, um, puberty is just around the corner. I, that, 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 that's the reason why. I, tr I tried making, like, a little joke, but that, that's, that's, like, the actual context it's being used in, so it, it doesn't really work. As you can see, I'm clearly, like, a master at comedy. The song, wonderful. Puberty, wonderful. Acne, wonderful. Everything about puberty, absolutely just wonderful. The video associated with it, wonderful and totally not scarring. Definitely something you can show to your um, little six-year-old and teach them early on, and I recommend you do that. Now, Avengers, Infinity War is the second biggest crossover of 2018. Right under Paradox Ghostblade vs. The Dark Lord 2, but that's pretty hard to beat, so no hard feelings here. Like, this movie is pretty good, you know? It's- I would highly recommend you watch it. Now, I know what you're thinking. What song am I talking about from this movie? The trailer music? Thor's entrance into Wakanda music? No. I, I'm talking about the movie. So, it starts with Thanos, the strongest superhero on, on the Asgardian ship. Akkadian Empire by Imagine Idiots. Now, I'm imagining idiots, alright? You know, you know what doesn't come to mind when I'm imagining these idiots? Imagine idiots, because if they were idiots, they wouldn't have been able to make such a 
beautiful work of art. While um, Night Animals was a um, wonderful horror edutainment song, this is a wonderful um, historical fiction parody edutainment song, which means it has a lot more shoes to fill, and it's impressive how they managed to do that. See, it's a parody of an indie, you know, under-the-radar song called Radioactive. You might have heard of it, but probably not. And it does a good job of doing a great job of being better than that stupid song no one likes. Ah! With beautiful lyrics such as I'm waking up, I feel it in my bones. Sure enough, enough to, to make my plants grow. How could you not like this song? You see, the, the bones, they make the, the, they make the plants grow because of, like, the bones of, like, the, 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 okay, the, the bones make the plants grow. They have, like, the calcium residue that, like, is so strong that it just resonates from, from the king. It, it like it makes it it makes it, the calcium goes into the pl it's genius okay it, it just wake up and realize it, it's genius all right although only only one verse and one course is written it still manages to be way better than the original and really awesome too like if the whole song was written Okay, it probably still wouldn't be number one, but it would be like a 2.5, like that close, you know? The Math Rap by Mr. Paper Stapler. Now look, I know what you're thinking. The Math Rap! And you'd be correct, it, it is indeed, it's, um, it's the Math Rap. The Math Rap is shockingly at number two. Now. I personally didn't think anything would be able to top it, but we did, we, we were able to find, um, one that was able to slightly, um, beat it, you know, but, um, and let's talk about that when we get to the number one spot. We're not talking about that one, we're talking about the math rap. This rap was made by Mr. Paper Stapler, obviously, who was a high school teacher who was trying to get his kids to learn math, but they never paid attention, and as a result, he made this. Well, it sure got my attention because absolutely everything about it is like a master plan coming together to do great things for the world, and it is just pure genius. Hmm, where to start with this genius? Ooh, I know. Let's talk about the instrumental. Now, if you listen, I like math. Math is cool. Math is the reason I go to school. You'll hear it's just Cars for Kids jingle on loop for for the entire song, but that's genius. You might think, oh, well, that's dumb, that's lazy, and that makes absolutely no sense because that's not, not even an instrumental. But, you see, that's where the genius is because the Cars for Kids jingle, although I couldn't fit it on this list, is a pretty good song in itself, so having that will just automatically improve it having it in the background and not letting it like steal the spotlight or outshadow your rap in any way it just shows how good you are in comparison which is pretty smart next let's discuss the flow now you might think it's an odd instrumental choice to have the cards for kids jingle on loop but you cannot deny the fact that he flows amazingly with it. These letters replace number savage lit fam dab if they're unknown, just like my dad. Now, you might think, oh my gosh, he's not even rapping on beat if you're uninitiated. But we are initiated. You see, he's not rapping off beat. He's creating his own beat, his own flow without the handicap of a beat, unlike these other trash rappers out there that need that stupid little handicap. Insert transition word here. The visuals are pretty, pretty nice. Now, 
It's not your traditional flashy music video to distract you from my awful rapping. Look, here's a car. Look, I, I got money. Here's some girls to, to distract you from the awful audio. But instead, it's a slideshow, which gives each lyric a picture, and it helps associate that fact better with that picture, which in turn allows you to remember math easier, which is pretty cool. Enough beating around the bush. Let's talk about the main factor of this video. The lyrics. Also, gems is stuff as well, but if you use gems, I will tell. Oh my gosh, these lyrics. These lyrics are so good. I, just, I love them to death. Oh my god. These lyrics are not the greatest lyrics ever made, but they certainly are the best lyrics ever made. The lyrics are simplistic, get complex, and poetic. And the emotion put into every line, every word, every freaking letter, just improves the experience tenfold. Move over, Eminem, M and K, and all you other trash M and Cs, for you will never match the sheer genius of MNR paper stapler. This is definitely, without a doubt, the best rap ever made. This is an example of a flawless song. But the reason that it's only at number two is because I, we, found a song that's m m m m more better than this one. Before we move on to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I mean, look at all these people who enjoyed it and say that it's the best song ever. I mean, at these little ca I mean, mature adults with amazing criticism abilities say it's the best song ever. Who are you to say it's bad, huh? Now, the effects are magnificent. The first time I watched this, I didn't even know it was fake. Like, I thought it was all real. Like, that guy looks exactly like a little kid, and he definitely looks like he's at that totally real house with that totally real grandma. Like, it only took me a second viewing with someone as great of an eye as mine to realize that it might have been fake, but don't let that break the immersion for you, because it is still a masterpiece. Also, that little, that little twist at the end made me wet my- wait, what? It made me Bet my wet sheets because it was so shocking and scary. This is a song by um, some guy called Alienation. But it's on here because it is really. If we can get 300 million likes, I will release a music video. Most subscribed channel on YouTube, Gaming with Nikki, proves here that. She is not one you should mess with. Apparently, there's some there's some guy, and like, he he unsubscribed from her, so she's gonna drop a diss track. And like, I can't describe why it's on here. You just have to listen. So uh. I'm Yeah, all of you guys watching should um sub to her right now. I know that's not a lot, but still go sub to her and um don't you even think of unsubscribing, otherwise you will get flamed. Also remember subscribe to PewDiePie T series of Satan. Uh... Fatter than you by um Caden Parker ten twenty one. Or, in this case, Johnny. So let's go, let the room get chiller. Let's go to the Shikurita. Oh my god, I take it back. This is the most best crossover of 2018. Scratch that, ever. It has Sebastian the Blobfish, Johnny Johnny Yes Papa, Undertale, Steven Universe, me, Caden Parker. It, it has everything, okay? Now, we all know Stronger Than You, you know, that, that Undertale song that, that Steven Universe shamelessly ripped off. 
Well, um, it doesn't matter about any of that. All that matters is how beautiful this version is. This is definitely the definitive version, and if you say either of these are better, you're wrong, and you're going to hell. Like, it even uses my beautiful word. Ding a thing a thong a dong a ling a dongulus. Ding a thing a thong a dong a ling a dongulus. I mean, it's like God and God 2 have merged together and created God 3, which totally makes sense because this is awesome, okay? Visuals, the cinematography, the choreography is beautiful, they're mind boggling. It's like. Disney couldn't do better than this, okay? Even if they tried, even if they spent all the money they made off of every single project they've ever done onto this, they couldn't have made it look any better, okay? All I can think of when I'm watching these visuals are... These visuals are good. Like... Like, it's so good that I can't just sit in this chair and talk about it for most of it. I'll probably sit back down. But I have to, like, show you my legs... You know what, I gotta show you my, my socks that I put on just for the sake of recording this video. Just because I gotta show my full body, my entire body language, because it's just that good. There is so much passion and, and detail put into every single inch of every single frame that you cannot even remotely feel even a slight itch of discomfort while watching this video. That's how good it is, and it just reminds us all of the wacky, light-hearted, quirky, colorfulness that we so love about the Sebastian Blobfish literary universe. Now, for those of you who haven't read the story, like you should have, it's important I give you some context because it's not really a musical, this is like the only song, but it's really amazing, you know, how this song trumps every single musical production ever with just one song, and it's, like, amazing. Okay, so pretty much Ronaldo's the main villain, not, not Johnny. Johnny, this is his only scene, but it's like he outshadows Ronaldo from this one scene alone. And it introduces his motives, shows him why he's a bad guy, it shows him how he's a bad guy, it shows off his evil bad guyness. Everything that's essential to introducing a character, even though he'll never appear again. Rest in peace. And um, the lyrics do all of this beautifully. The lyrics do all of this while also portraying an epic finale battle, because this is like the finale. So it should be epic. And it is, it sets the mood that this is going to end. And it's going to end with a bang. <laughs> and it sure does. Yeah, um, I should probably um point out right now that I already said this, but Caden Parker wrote these lyrics. This isn't like a little like joke like custom made for this video. Like Caden wrote this entire song. Like ding a thing a song a dong a ling a dong this is of course my word, but that was me before, and he just used it geniusly, I might add. But, um, yeah, this is his song, so, um, don't direct all the wonderfulness towards me, although I did contribute a bit, as you'll learn in a second. Just, I know I've teased Caden Parker a bit, and I was completely right in all those videos, but, um, I think this more than makes up for all of that, so check him out. He doesn't post anything like this. Now, the singing is amazing. Like, no good song is complete without some pretty good singing, and um, the singing here is amazing. Why? Because it's sung by the number one singer in singing history, moi. Ah, 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 ah. That's right, I sung this entire song for the official version, and dare I say, I, had pretty, I did a pretty great job, you know? The emotion, the passion, I put my entire heart, blood, sweat, tears, my entire life into making sure this was good. And you could really feel the character, not me, but the character, oozing into the song because of my vocal genius. So, when you're, um, jamming along, you know who to thank, um, money will work as thanks, um, email it to me, please, I'm desperate. Everything about the idea, all the way to the execution, was perfect. 
No, sorry. Just around the corner was perfect. Avengers 3, perfect. Err. Acadian Empire, perfectest. The math rap was perfect wrist. But fatter than you is perfect wrist wrist times infinity. So thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Caden. Thanks, me. Thank everyone for the masterpiece. And remember, Johnny, you will always be fatter than you. Sure, 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 girl. think I'm fatter than you. All right, that's the end of this list. All other songs not mentioned are awful and should never be listened to again. Now, if you like the video, punch that like button in the face. And Thank you guys, and I will see how you do it. <laughs>